One of the first things which everybody should understand is that every creature in the universe that is in any way sensitive and in any manner of speaking conscious regards itself as a human being. That is to say, it knows and is aware of a hierarchy of beings above it and a hierarchy of beings below it. If you take such a tiny creature as a fruit fly, which lives only a few days, it is aware of all sorts of weird little animals and objects and spores floating in the atmosphere, which we don't even notice unless we've got a microscope around. And very few people have. And it criticizes them as being inferior animals and uh, all that sort of thing. Whereas human beings are things that it doesn't comprehend. Uh, they're in, as much outside its intellect as a quasar is outside ours. And we see these far off objects floating in the heavens and we have only the vaguest idea of what they may be. Actually, we may all be some kind of uh, uh, atoms in another dimension. <laughs> and all these galaxies being the constituent elements. Who knows? But there is, I think, a fundamental principle that everybody must understand uh, in order to know what is the meaning of the Tao or the Chinese sense of the course of nature. And that is the principle of relativity. It's absolutely fundamental to an understanding of Taoist philosophy, relativity. That is to say that wherever you are and whoever you are and whatever you are, you're in the middle. You know, pick in the middle. That's the game. And you, you, you see, just in the same way as when you stand, say, on the deck of a ship, and you can see a, a horizon all around you to exactly the same distance, you're in the center of a circle because your senses extend a certain direction, in all directions, and therefore give you the impression of being in the middle. Now, everything in the world feels like that. And also it has its own kind, which look natural to it. You see uh, spiders and uh, hydras and sea urchins and so on don't look very natural to us. We say, well, I wouldn't want to look like that. But they say when they see us, well, what kind of an awful thing is that? And what a lot of nonsense it does. But now, here is a very strange thing that every creature, therefore, which feels that it is human and which knows that it's there in the same way as you know you're here, experiences being here as constituting a sort of blockage. There are very few human beings that don't feel this, and I'm sure there are very few creatures that don't feel it in some way too. The sensation of a certain tension which constitutes the feeling of I-ness, of there-ness, of being here. Because after all, every creature is a particular form. Everything is individual. Not only you as a total organism standing here, but all the component cells of your body, each one of them has some sort of a feeling of its own. And it, it is individual. You can look at a microscope at the right level of magnification, and you can see that thing there with its own little life. And if you examine the stream of your blood, you'll find it full of all kinds of organisms that are having all sorts of conspiracies and games and plots and eating each other and doing these things that, like we do. Only we, we realize that we wouldn't be healthy as a total organism unless there were all these wars and fights and plots and politics going on between the various cells in our blood. But from their point of view, you see, they feel a little bit put out because they're being organized. And we're in the same situation because very slowly the human beings on the surface of the planet are realizing themselves into a total planetary organism with an electronic nervous system. You see, in science fiction, which was published round about the 1920s, 
It was always expected that future human beings would have enormous heads because they would have very big brains and they would be very wise. It didn't work that way. What happens is that the human race is building a brain outside its body. That is to say, an interlocking electronic network of telephonic, television, radionic communications, which is rapidly being interlocked with computers so that you will, within a few years, be able to plug your own brain into a computer. You will have a little gadget here behind the ear, that looks slightly like a hearing aid. And that will be integrated with your brain in such a way that you can plug in right here. That will only be an intermediate stage, uh, because just in the same way as when we thought that all communications by electricity had to go through wires, and then we got rid of the wires and got radio and television, so in exactly the same way, we'll, we'll eventually get rid of telephones and radio and television and we'll communicate uh, by some entirely new method that is at present called ESP. But that will mean that absolutely nobody has a private life anymore. Everybody will read automatically everybody else's thoughts. You will have no defenses. Everybody else will see right through you. And some people will protest and say, well, this is terrible, there's no privacy anymore, that means there's no me. Well, that's what's happened to your own cells and your own neurons. And they objected at some time in the course of evolution, we're getting our private life taken away, we're being organized into a body. And we're doing the same thing. Only we have got to try and see if we can be clever about it. And that is to say, to do two things at once to have this tremendous openness to each other, whereby I don't care if you read my thoughts and you don't care if I read yours, but at the same time, nevertheless, each one of us retains a peculiar individuality. Almost in the same way as nothing could be more unlike a stomach than a heart, and nothing could be more unlike a kidney than a pituitary gland, and nothing could be more unlike intestines than a rib cage. You see, there's a lot of differentiation inside the body, despite the fact that it is a, a, an organism functioning altogether. So then the problem, though, uh, as I said, is that for each individual which is outlined, which is a separate thing, or rather I would, instead of using the word separate, I would like to use the word distinct. Separate, as I use the word, means disjointed, cut off from. Distinct means a feature of something where a, an absolutely distinguishable pattern is part of a larger pattern of a whole. So something can be distinct without being separate in just the same way as back and front can be very different and yet inseparable.